So please all take your seats. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to a very special multi-faith tribute to a remarkable man who was an inspiration to us all, Nelson Mandela. I'd like to start out by acknowledging some of the very special guests who are here with us today. So when I call your name, if you wouldn't mind just standing up and giving a bit of a wave to the audience as I call your name. Ms. Alani McQuena, South African Consul General. <laughs> Olivia Chow, MP, NDP. <laughs> Dr. Bidendra Dubey. Rabbi Avram Plotkin. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Bante Saranapala. <laughs> Imam Hamid Slimi. <laughs> Reverend Fred Hiltz. <laughs> Professor Jill Natus, Vice Provost Students, University of Toronto. Thank you. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a profound sense of loss and sadness that we are gathered here this morning to honor and remember our beloved Nelson Mandela. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived, it is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. Those are the words of Nelson Mandela, and it is with those words in mind that we are here today. It is because of the difference that he has made in our lives and the lives of the people around the world that we are gathering here this morning to remember the man who is fondly known to us as Madiba. But whether you knew him as Madiba, Tata, freedom fighter, or father of a nation. Nelson Holishala Mandela was all that and more. Words will never fully describe all that he was, but simply put, he was hope. He was a symbol of hope to all of us, the promise of a better life still to come for generations of South Africans and the world. Perhaps most importantly though, he was the embodiment of the best in all of us. For me, a South African by birth, he was an inspiration. He showed me, he showed us, how to have and live a just life and remember the needs of others before ourselves. And he taught us that when you are on the right side, on the side of what is just, you will never lose no matter how long it takes. Now, what happened during apartheid was a crime against humanity, and Mandela became a shining example for all of us, young and old, of what true humanity really is. He gave us something to aspire to, and he left us wanting more. Madiba may have passed away, but he will continue to live on in our hearts and in our souls. He was the captain of his soul, and he touched all of our souls in the process. Today, because of Nelson Mandela, we are stronger globally. We are united. We are family. So, this isn't goodbye. This is our way of saying thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us, Madiba. We are gathered today in this snowy day, snowy morning, to celebrate Mandela's legacy, a world where our differences are celebrated, and we are doing it the way Madiba would have liked it, in a multi-faith environment where, regardless of religion or faith, we are one family. Thank you.
Very beautiful. Our first speaker this morning is Mr. Jag Pillay. Jag Pillay is the founder and former president of the Canadian Council of South Africans. He's a well-known member of the South African Canadian community and has been working hard for years on behalf of the community. Jag has devoted much of his time to fundraising for uh, groups here in Canada, but also abroad. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a warm welcome to one of our unsung heroes in the community, Mr. Jag Pillay. Mesdames, Messieurs, honored guests, my dear brothers and sisters, good morning and welcome. <clears throat> On behalf of the Canadian Council of South Africans, South African Women for Women, and the Mandela, Mandela Legacy Committee, thank you for being here for Madiba. Thank you also. Madam MC Indira Naidu Harris for agreeing to host this event for us. Many, many thanks to Carol Agan for putting this event together on a very short notice. We also wish to thank our speakers, uh, Mr. John Piper, Chair of the Mandela, Mandela Legacy Committee, Professor Jill Majors of the University of Toronto, uh, Salani, Makwena, Consul General of South Africa, Ezron Mogalakala, former inmate of Robben Island, and Olivia Chow, Member of Parliament, Ottawa. Our sincere thanks to Honey Backer, Noam Le and Noam Loyam Lerish, who sang the national anthem beautifully. <clears throat> and also to Brian Lipton, who will be performing a song close to Madiba's heart. We also extend our gratitude to multi faith leaders, Dr. Bodendranath Dube, President of the Vishnu Mandir, Rabbi Abraham Plotkin, spiritual leader of Shabbat Lubavitch, Dr. Bhante Sarnapala, Buddhist chaplain at the University of Toronto, Imam Abid Slimi, Chairman of the Canadian Council of Imam and the most reverend Fred Hughes, Primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. Let us all pray as one, as many faiths, but one humanity in the spirit of Ubuntu today in a cold but multicultural Canada. Hambadashle. <laughs> Mariba, and go where, Mariba. Thank you. Um, Mr. John Piper, Chair of the Mandela Legacy Committee. John Piper has been a volunteer and activist for social justice in Southern Africa since 1975. And now, over the years, John has worked tirelessly to fundraise and create awareness about the challenges people face in South Africa. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. John Piper. Thank you. It was, actually, it was 1965 in Paris when uh, the Ravonia trials happened and he went into jail. And all of the left bank students, qu'il parle le français ou l'anglais, whatever it was, they were out there on the street to revendicate the liberty of Mr. Mandela in 1965. Alors là, ici, uh, we have a committee. We have a committee that is going to um, work very hard at bringing all Canadians from coast to coast to coast into the legacy framework. The federal government's already involved. Stephen Harper has already appointed Peter Braid from Kitchener Waterloo to lead that part of the legacy plan. And, uh, and uh, so, Selene, Maquena, and we, we know you're leaving, but you'll be able to see the legacy back in the clouds as you look back in Canada as it grows and grows and grows across this country. 
and Olivia Chow will be championing this as well from her new seat. We don't quite know where, but wherever it's going to be, she will be championing um, the legacy of Nelson Mandela and the fight against apartheid. So thank you for inviting me to, to say just a few words about the amazing group of people, the Canadians, who have paved the way for abolishing apartheid in South Africa. They number, I got here in my notes, hundreds of thousands. I think the speechwriter got a little excited. Maybe tens of thousands, but in the, in the multi-numbers, from religious organizations who are here today, from trade unions, to school boards, to municipal councils, native Canadians, new Canadians, and just citizen Canadians. They have been mightily supported by, just, just look at the list, John George Diefenbaker in 1956. Half a century ago, followed by Mike Pearson, Pierre Trudeau, Brian Mulroney, Minister Joe Clark. Remember when he brought in the sanctions on South Africa trade coming to Canada? Remember that? That was quite something. Miss Kim Campbell, just a few days, but you know what? She was there last week. Paul Martin, Jean Chrétien and Stephen Harper. Not one prime minister changed the direction of what Canadian foreign policy was going to be in Southern Africa and the battle against apartheid. Um, and um, McLean, you have been, I think, at the head of our continuing struggle to make sure that South Africans will not be left in the lurch again. Um, in English, our group is called the Mandela Legacy Committee. En français, le titre de notre comité s'appelle le comité héritage. Héritage Mandela. Héritage, sir, that sounds a little bit different from the English. But however, legacy and héritage, that's the words that you have to know about. You may know that the largest crowd on the streets of Canada last week morning, Madiba's passing, was in Montreal, Montréal. C'était le plus grand foule qui était là. So that is why we are reaching out to Quebec and to Quebecers um, to play a large role in honoring Mr. Mandela's struggle for democracy and freedom in South Africa so that this movement of people can reach from coast to coast to coast and even up to Nunavut. We are asking Canadians, municipalities especially, School boards especially, corporations especially, trade unions especially, and all sorts and sizes of social advocacy um, to get behind this call for, in fact, Lloyd McHale has already said to Pam McConnell, he said, Pam, can we change Front Street to something like, you know, Nelson Mandela Boulevard or something like that? And, and so that's what Lloyd said to Pam. Pam is on it, and, and the rest of the councillors are going to get behind something like that. And we have to, and the schools here in, in, in Toronto, the school boards, can give some leadership around scholarship programs, essay contests, and all that sort of thing that will keep the light of the fight against apartheid, and especially our hero, Madiba, in our minds quotidiennement, daily. Um, so shortly, we will launch our little website to capture some of Canadians' ideas. The federal government will be doing the same thing. And in whatever walk of life that you are, I would, I would urge you to go to that order of people that you associate with and encourage them to come up with all kinds of ideas to make sure that apartheid never reappears and that the life and actions of Madiba will be forever remembered. Thank you very, very much, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.
to the people in this room is Carol Adrians. Ms. Adrians is the founder of South African Women for Women and the Zenzeli <coughs> Development Foundation. SONG furthers the work done by South African women globally, and Zenzeli helps African women by providing them with the skills and the training they need to be successful. Ms. Adrians is well known for her passion and her dedication to empowering women. Please help me give a warm welcome to Carol Adrians. Thank you. Today, we are remembering President Nelson Mandela, who inspired the world with his unlimited capacity to forgive. His 27 years in prison on Robben Island gave him the experience of deep silence. Those who have this experience of inner silence come to understand what it means to forgive and forget. His life became valuable because he offered the world this inspiration that when we forgive and forget completely, we can achieve true unity and a deep sense of humanity. We South Africans call this Ubuntu. Let us focus on this and embrace what he stood for in remembrance of this very special man, Nelson Mandela, who dedicated his life to fight all forms of domination. Thank you. Okay, is South African-born Professor Joe Matus. We're delighted that Professor Matus is able to join us today and bring greetings on behalf of the university. Please help me welcome Joe Matus. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as you've heard, my name is Jill Matus, and it's my privilege to serve as Vice Provost Students and First Entry Division at the University of Toronto. I am honored to bring greetings on behalf of the entire university community. In the past week, we have witnessed and we are participating in a global outpouring of gratitude for the life of Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela changed his country profoundly for the better. He did so by the sheer justice of his cause his singular integrity, and the incalculable personal sacrifices he made on his country's behalf. And as a result of this, he became a hero, not only to his own people, but to people around the world. He brought out the best in countless individuals, and he stands as a permanent contradiction of despair in the face of seemingly insurmountable systematic injustice. He teaches us that hope is justified and change is possible, even in the most difficult of circumstances. It is wonderful and fitting that this gathering in tribute to Nelson Mandela is taking place here at the university's multi-faith center a place of understanding, inclusiveness, shared values, and harmony. It represents beautifully the ideals that Madiba champions. On behalf of the university, I would like to thank the Canadian Council of South Africans for bringing us all here today. I believe that as a result, we will be encouraged to keep doing our part to extend the legacy or heritage of Nelson Mandela, to keep working for justice and reconciliation in our communities and our world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Justice and reconciliation, very well said. Thank you, Professor Joe Matus. Consul General Savani Mapoina assumed her duties at the South African Consulate in Toronto in March 2010. We are honored to have her join us here today and bring a special tribute for Madiba. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a warm welcome to the Consul General of South Africa, Savani Mapoina. It's, it's a great honor for me to have been requested to bring greetings on behalf of the government of, and people of South Africa this morning to pay tribute to this very beloved father of the nation and icon. 
that the Holy Shasha Nelson Mandela, our liberator, our father. Your efforts during the anti-apartheid struggle, as you heard from John Piper, would not not go unnoticed. We are waiting anxiously, and we know what Canada delivered previously. We know that Canada will continue to deliver to ensure that the legacy of Mandela lives on. We know now, in the words of Dr. Sandy Glickman, that Mandela was never a selfish man. It was never about him. It was about a vision of unity and humanity. It was not about him. It was about the future of millions of uh, who made up the rainbow nation of South Africa. It was not about him. It was about going out of his comfort zone to understand the pain and dreams of others and speak to them in a way that resonated with them. It was not about him. It was about a passion for greater purpose from which millions could benefit. It was not about him. It was about replacing judgment and prejudice with tolerance and respect. Mandela was not a selfish man. He was a man who gave up his life to the struggle for the people of South Africa. He dedicated many, many years for our freedom and we should never and will never take it for granted. You will recall, ladies and gentlemen, in 1985, when his daughter addressed the people at the stadium, at Jabulani Stadium in Soweto, and she said, I'm bringing a word from my father, from the docks of Robben Island. My father says, too many have suffered for the love of freedom. I too cannot sell my birthright, nor am I prepared to sell the birthright of my people to be free. Your freedom and mine cannot be separated. And these words he said because he did not want to buy in into the South African government's sweet talk to release him and give him certain freedoms which his people, us, would not have. And he said, I can serve many more years. As long as my people are not, are not free, I will never be free. To this day, Mandela has achieved a lot for the people of South Africa. Not only did he achieve freedom for us, equality, non-discrimination, and reconciliation, but we also recognize the lives of our people have improved in more ways than one. Today, we speak of a free, democratic, non-sexist and non-racist South Africa. These are not easy gains for some of us who have lived in both worlds, the old and the new South Africa. We see those gains, we have seen his work. Today our people are free to walk alongside one another, to eat and drink from the same tables. Today our people have access to free education, to health, to water, clean water and sanitation, access to electricity, to better housing, health care, and by and large to the freedoms never, never, never attained during the, during the apartheid years. Today, the number of households with access to electricity is about 12.1 million since the inauguration of Mandela, which translates to 85%. Moreover, Nine out of 10 households now have access to water. You can, you can guess in 1994 what that percentage was, 13%, now 80%. We can open our taps and drink. Things that other people would ordinarily take for granted. While some inequality remains in South Africa, of course, the expansion of our social programs have been extended. Now, 16 million people in South Africa benefit from anti-poverty programs that the government has initiated. The South African economy has also expanded in the last 19 years by 83%. And really, I'm saying this because these are the things that don't come out in the media. Media like snippets of information that seek to derail us from the cause that Nelson Mandela sought to champion for us. We'll therefore agree with me, ladies and gentlemen, that the struggle our former president fought 
was not in vain. As we pay homage to this icon and father of the nation today, we are proud to say as South Africans, we strive for a better South Africa in a better world, and based on Madiba ideals, we can achieve this. In closing, I'd like to, to quote Mandela. In May 2004, when he addressed the joint sitting of parliament, let us never be unmindful of the terrible past from which we have come. Using that memory, not as a means to keep us shackled to the past in a negative way, but as a joyous reminder of how far we have come and how much we have achieved. My wish is that South Africans never give up on the belief in goodness, that they cherish that faith in human beings is a cornerstone of our democracy. South Africans, I'd like to make a plea that wherever you find us yourselves, by accident or design, we should continue to fight for the betterment of our people and our country. We should continue to use the positions that we hold here in Canada and elsewhere to try and improve the lives of the low, those less privileged. Apartheid was waged in many, many years. It cannot be eroded. The vestiges of apartheid cannot be eroded in mere 19 years. That we should always remember. We should ask the question, what can I do to make a contribution to my people? What can I do to continue to promote my country to the people and the government of Canada and, and not to join the chorus of doom? We have won the struggle for freedom, but the struggle for economic freedom and elimination of poverty remains. Amanda. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gathered here today for a special multi-day ceremony to pay our respects to Madiba. Nelson Mandela dedicated his life to fighting for a just, fair, and inclusive society, one that
that includes everyone, regardless of race, gender, or faith. We know he would be happy to see us all here this morning, offering our thoughts and prayers from a variety of different faith perspectives. So, it is in the spirit of Mandela's commitment to a just and inclusive world that I now introduce our first presenter in our series of distinguished guests who will deliver multi-faith tribute. Dr. Budendra Dubé is Assistant Professor of Surgery at McMaster University. He's also the President of the Canadian Museum of Hindu Civilization. Dr. Dubé is the Government of Canada's representative on global pluralism and a recipient of the Order of Ontario and the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the President of the Vishnu Mandir and the representative for the Hindu community here today, Dr. Budendra Dubé. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I, Council General, Member of Parliament, Olivia Chow, uh, Faith Leaders, ladies and gentlemen, it's a hard, hard act to follow, uh, but I will try a little bit. Uh, there's, a, there's a Sanskrit prayer which goes like this Om Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. Mityoma Amatam Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. It means, lead me from darkness unto light, which Madiba has done and has shown us. Lead me, lead me from untruth to truth, and lead me from death to immortality. As far as I'm concerned, and, he, and above and on behalf of the Hindu community, we honored uh, Nelson Mandela a long time ago. We have the only bust of Mandela in Canada marble bust which the Consul General will be coming to see and, and open on Sunday at 1 o'clock. And we have him on the wall of peace together with Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, and the rest of the icons of religion, Jesus Christ, the sign of Islam, Judaism, etc. I urge you to come on Sunday at 1 o'clock to see how much we revere him, how much we, we uh, consider him as not only as an icon. I think if there's a saint a non-religious saint. That sainthood should be on Mandela. There should be. No, there's no word. As a matter of fact, so many saints have come and gone, but there's no saint like Mandela. Can you imagine being in a place for 27 years and come out and say, "I forgive you"? Uh, it is very difficult. So today, on behalf of the Hindu community, I would like to, uh, to, to thank you very much and hope that wherever Madiba is, his soul will always enjoy a place among the hearts of all freedom fighters. Let us say, praise be unto Mandela. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Dubé. Reverend Dr. Bhante Sarnapala originally came, originally came to Canada to serve as a resident monk at the West End Buddhist <coughs> Monastery in Mississauga. Today, Dr. Sarnapala is the principal of the Sunday Dhamma School and the rector of the College of Buddhist Studies at the West End Buddhist Temple and Meditation Center. He's also the Buddhist chaplain here at the University of Toronto. Reverend Dr. Sanan Bapala will now deliver a tribute to Madiba from the Buddhist community. Thank you. Good morning, distinguished guests. It's a great honor to represent the Buddhist community and my temple, Western Buddhist Temple in Mississauga, and also Campus Chaplains Association of U of D. Um, last Sunday, I have paid a special tribute to our beloved Madiva at my Sunday school with over uh, 385 students and 200 parents. Uh, it was a wonderful moment for me personally because the day I heard the news, uh, I was saddened by his death, and, uh, but his uh, memories, whatever he did, uh, they will thrive and live in our hearts and minds. So our beloved Madiva is no more. His motto remains uh, being laid to rest even at this very moment but his name will remain ever fresh in our hearts and minds for long 
a long time to come. My dear friends, as you all remember this statement, uh, which I really admire, uh, and which is in line with the Buddha's teachings. And our beloved Madhiva said, as I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I would still be in prison. This is in line with what Buddha taught us 26 centuries ago in Pali, uh, which is the ancient uh, language, we say, Akuchimang avadimang ajinimang ahasimi yechutang upanai hanti virangti sang nasamati nahi vere navirani samanti dhakudachanang avere nacha samanti esa dhammo sanantano so which means some want to live all their lives with negative feelings he abused me, he beat me, he defeated me, he robbed me. And those who nurse harbor such grudges, hatred will never cease. In this world, hatred never ceases by hatred. It ceases by love alone. This is the eternal law. He who has cut off the strap of hatred, the tongue of craving, and the rope of wrong views, together with the appendages of latent biases who has drawn asunder the crossbar of illusion and is enlightened or awake. Him I call divine or noble and arhant as saint. May our beloved Madiba, who brought sunshine to millions find eternal bliss and rest. Thank you. It's uh, really lovely to hear all the various perspectives from the different religions, isn't it? Yeah. Rabbi Avram Plotkin is a long-standing member of the Rabbinical Council of Toronto and is a member of the Toronto Bysden Ecclesiastical Court. He also serves as a scholar in the residence at Mayanot Institute of Higher Learning in Jerusalem. Please help join me in welcoming Rabbi Plotkin now who will deliver sentiments from the Jewish community. Thank you very much for this great honor. I'm, I'm representing the Jewish community, but more particularly, um, I happen to have a congregation that's like 70 or 80 percent ex patriots from South Africa, many Jewish people who used to live in South Africa. So I come here today to say a special thank you for their families who are back in South Africa, and I speak to them quite often. And they tell me about how their lives were saved in spirit because of the great work of Madiba. Because what could have turned into, God forbid, a very tragic time in the, the history of South Africa. Adiba, with his words of reconciliation and kindness and Bible-like greatness, was able to turn this situation around and give everyone there is living today in fear, harmony, and peace. And so this is something that I'd like to say personally thank you the South African community, from our community, our Jewish community, who live in South Africa. The chief rabbi, Rabbi Warren Goldstein, was given a great honor to speak at the main event in South Africa. And he spoke very, very eloquently about the connection to Joseph, a Jewish fellow who was in prison for many, many years, and he came out 
and he didn't hold any grudges in his heart, but he reconciled with his brothers who were responsible for his imprisonment. There are many stories that go around this time. You hear different people telling stories. So I heard a story from a personal physician of Nelson Mandela, a Dr. Friedland, who had the opportunity of bringing his two sons to Madiba, came into his room, introduced him to his two sons. He says, my two sons are here. The name is Aaron and Benjamin. And he smiled and he says, Aaron and Benjamin, beautiful biblical names. He says, you know, when you go up to heaven, they'll know your name right away. <laughs> he says, but Nelson Mandela, I don't know if they'll know my name when I get up there. <laughs> but what I'm here to tell you today is that even greater than a name is a master of a good name. And that's what Mandela was. When he comes up to heaven now, he brings with him not words, not names, but a person who mastered a good name. <clears throat> Pirkei Avot, one of the great treasures of, of Jewish wisdom, says there are three crowns. There's the crown of priesthood, the crown of wisdom, and the crown of kingship. But the greatest crown of all is the crown of a good name. And that's what he comes up with. He doesn't need to say names. He comes up and says the words of truth, the words of justice. He says, my name is freedom. My name is forgiveness. My name is reconciliation. My name is peace. And when he says those words, he is ushered in to the highest of high. And please God, May his soul rest in peace, but most important, may the people of this world take to heart his message and internalize it in our hearts, etch it in stone, not just monuments, physical monuments, but bring it to real life. Let's teach his legacy, as we said before, to our families, to our children, to the whole world, and let us say amen. amen. Dr. Hamid Salimi is the former chairman of the Canadian Council of Imams. He is an imam, a scholar, and a community developer. Imam Salimi is also the founder and executive director of the Faith of Life Network. Dr. Salimi is currently the imam and resident scholar of Sayeda Khadija Center in Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a warm welcome to Imam Salimi, who will deliver a tribute to Nelson Mandela from the Muslim community. وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا وإنا إليه راجعون. This prayer we say whenever we hear of the death of a person, we commanded by God Almighty. To repeat, truly to God we belong, and truly to Him we will return. We're on our journey. We are spiritual beings going through a human experience, and then our journey continues. It never ends. It's not the end for Nelson Mandela. As the last rabbi said, he's going to the highest levels, no doubt. And God says, give glad tidings for those who are patient, who acted patiently, who turned an aching pain to forgiveness. And not only they fulfilled for themselves, they fulfilled for others. And this is why we remind ourselves as we say farewell to this great man. I agree with Dr. Dubey, a saint. There are people, but there are people as well. There are people who live for themselves, and there are people who live for others. And he is one of that category. And it is a legacy to remember for us, working in nonprofit, volunteering, 
to be inspired by this great man who always kept the smile even in times of adversity and hardship. I quote him saying, in describing his life, I was not a messiah, but an ordinary man who had become a leader because of extraordinary circumstances. Top of humility, humbleness. I asked our South African congregants, and I asked one of our, one of my best volunteers, I said, what do you know of Nelson Mandela when you grew up? He said, I said, just give me one word for him. Don't give me too many things. He said, humility. And I hear this this morning. It is humility. As Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, those who are humble are the highest in the eyes of God. And he is high. And today, all of us come with love and respect for this man. Some of us never met him. Actually, many of us never met him. And some of us had the encounter. Like my friend, Zeb, I asked him earlier, please tell me three things you know about Nelson Mandela. He said, reconciliation, social justice, and compassion. I was searching, like probably some of you did, of his quotes and what he said in some of his speeches. He didn't speak a lot. He was not a talker like many of us. But he acted more. He spoke less and acted more, and that is the sign of a wise man. But he said about his freedom, and after 27 years of injustice in prison, he says for the free, or for to be free, is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Let's carry that legacy among ourselves. He is inspiring us, all of us from different faiths. This transcends religion. This is above and beyond religion. This is very deep, even deeper. It is a spiritual connection we have with him. And this is what we are here this morning, connecting with one another, carrying that torch. And we pray to God Almighty to bless his soul. Que Dieu bénisse son âme. On paix hommage à cet homme qui est un homme formidable, qui a lutté contre l'injustice contre l'intolérance, contre le racisme, contre l'apartheid, et il nous inspire aujourd'hui. Il est un symbole historique. C'est une personnalité qui va rester tout le temps et dans l'histoire. Et son nom a, va être écrit dans l'histoire et, et, et c'est notre tâche d'instruire nos enfants et la génération prochaine et prendre des leçons de sagesse de cette grande personne. Que Dieu le bénisse. Merci bien. There is a lot of uh, spiritual connections going on this morning. The most reverend Frederick James Hiltz is the 13th primate, uh, primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. Archbishop Hiltz was ordained in 1978. As chief pastor of the Anglican Church of Canada, Archbishop Hiltz takes great joy in visiting what he calls our beloved church across Canada, and spending time with parishes and dioceses on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the most reverend Fred Hiltz, primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. Distinguished guests and dear friends of South Africa, brothers and sisters in peace. This week, the entire world has witnessed in story and song and dance the great admiration and affection with which all South Africans held Nelson Mandela. He was their greatest son who became their father, their beloved Madiba. Some of us will remember and will have read that at the Rivonia treason trial in 1963 and 64, of which the outcome for Mandela and others was predictable, he ended that lengthy presentation with this personal conviction, and it's, it's actually at the bottom of the beautiful picture of Mandela before us. He said, during my lifetime, I've dedicated myself to this struggle of African people. 
I have fought against white domination, and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal for which I hope to live and to achieve, but if needs be, it's an ideal for which I am prepared to die. The amazing thing about Mandela was that while he was justly angered over the injustices borne by his people under apartheid, he channeled that anger for good. He turned a sentence of lifelong imprisonment into a commitment of lifelong resolve in liberating his people and in building a truly free and democratic nation. As one-time fellow prisoner and constant friend, the current president, Pohamba of Namibia, said this week, Mandela chose forgiveness over retribution. It's hard to imagine someone in prison for 27 years and walking out at the age of 71 and greeting a cheering crowd with these words, I greet you all in the name of peace, democracy, and freedom for all. Those were words that were a turning point in South Africa and for the world. Four years later, he was inaugurated as the president on May the 10th, 1994. And he thanked the international community for its support, saying, the universal struggles against apartheid was not an act of charity arising out of pity for our people, but an affirmation of our common humanity. And he spoke of the joy of South Africans living at a time when their nation was emerging, as he put it, from the darkest night into the bright dawn of freedom and democracy. Mandela's spirit, as I see it, was deeply rooted in the tradition of the prophets. The call of God through Micah, Mandela loved kindness. And he not only just loved justice, but as the prophets called us, he did justice. He walked humbly with God. But the call of God through the great prophet Isaiah, Mandela was a repairer of the breach between blacks and whites in South Africa. He was a restorer of the streets, ridding them of race-based violence. He gave his people hope, and he helped them to live in peace. From a Christian perspective, Mandela's labors are a powerful reflection of the teaching of Jesus. Blessed, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness they shall be satisfied. And to his great satisfaction, Mandela saw the emergence of a free and democratic South Africa. For the international tribute to Mandela, there could have been no more fitting date than December the 10th, International Human Rights Day. For as a South African journalist describes him, he's an icon of forgiveness and compassion magnanimity and reconciliation for the entire world. This week, people of many faith traditions have upheld Mandela, his family, and South Africa in their prayers. And we've prayed that nothing good in his life will be lost, but of continuing benefit to the world, and that everything that was important to him will be remembered by those who follow him. Here's his word to us today, gathered in a multi-faith service. He said, we need religious institutions. We need them to continue to be the conscience of society, a moral custodian, and a fearless champion of the interests of the vulnerable and downtrodden people of the world. My friends, to heed this call, 
will be to truly honor this great man. May he rest in peace. Amen. Okay. Our program now. Olivia Chow is the MP for Trinity Spadina and a former city councilor for Toronto. MP Chow was named one of the top 25 Canadian immigrants in Canada by Canadian Immigrant Magazine. She also worked hard to organize an anti-apartheid conference on behalf of Nelson Mandela. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome MP Olivia Chow. That helps us transcend heaviness, indifference, greed, despair. We, Mandela's greatness, transcend political boundaries, transcend ideologies, and religion. Why? It's because of his fundamental belief of goodness, of justice, of freedom, of equality, and the belief that if we reach inside us, we can find it. That when we come together, we have the power to make the difference. Because of his belief that no child would go to bed hungry, that we are all born equal, no matter what our color is. Who we are it does not matter. We are equal. I believe that when we work together, we can have a better world. And that's why he touched our hearts. And I saw that when I was a school board trustee way back when, in the 80s. And I saw that when we had the divestment strategy that the Toronto Board of Education will not do any business with any companies that invest in South Africa at the time, that we said we would have every year a student anti-apartheid conference because we want to tell our young people the evil of discrimination and equality, inequality. Some school trustees said, well, why would this matter some 13,000 kilometers away? Is it relevant to our young people in Toronto? No, it's not irrelevant. So some school trustee at that time said, oh, well, let's go cancel it. And he did. This annual conference that we have, he said, we'll do it until Mediva, Mediva is, is free. So young people got together. They descended at the school board these school trustees have never seen so many young people arriving at the place that are supposed to do their education. And they were clear. They were empowered by Mandela's idea of equality. Sure enough, school board trustee changed their mind very quickly, backed off, and we continued our and you at the apartheid conference. So when Nelson Mandela came to Canada, he came to Central Tech School, and I saw the thousands of young people, the entire place as he was walking in to the school, uh, to, to Central Tech, the entire place was lifting up in their stomping of feet and their excitement. I tell you that energy of young people is phenomenal, and I, again, I experience it in Sky Dome. It's the children that tell us what it all means when we find that goodness inside us. So that darkness has given away to light, and we can feel that joy and that light now because the sadness we feel at its loss will pass. The joy and the light will endure. It will endure when we work for justice and for equality. It will endure when we take our idea and turn it into action. So the kids won't go to bed hungry. So everyone is free. So there is equality. So that when we come together in this world and love and hope, we can make a difference. So we are the legacy of Nelson Mandela. We are the legacy when we take action for peace 
for equality and for justice. That's why Nadiba lives. Long live Nelson Mandela. It is hard to understand what is the true essence of a man, what makes them tick, what drives them. However, our next guest may help us better understand the true nature of Nelson Mandela. Ezra Mokala, former commander of the Azanian People Liberation Army and the member of PAC Central Committee, was in jail with President Mandela on Robben Island from 1963 to 1966. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. McCollum, who will deliver the eulogy for Madiba.